before we get started, let's check out the links in my description. We all want nice things. We want the car, we want a house, we want a high limit credit card. But if you don't have at least a 680 credit score, you're not even in the game. So click this link here to know where you stand and get your free credit scores from all three bureaus. That will be Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax. And also get your reports. If you would like to be free and become financially independent through entrepreneurship, click this link here to be free. If you'd like to get cash back, which is a discount during shopping, please click this link here to see my favorite cash back sites. And if you enjoy the music you hear in the background, please click the link here and subscribe to It's OAC. Hello everyone, welcome back to Community Wealth. I just recently did a video on my Equifax FICO 9 score and now I'm going to show you my 3 bureau score for Equifax, TransUnion and Experian through FICO 8. I finally have them updated and I'm also going to show you things that happened along the way and how I got to the point where I'm at now. I can't 100% explain to how I got to the point where I'm at now but I'm going to give you my thoughts and ideas of some things that happen along the way even though I know some things that definitely happen along the way but I can't account for every little thing because there are a lot of things that happen like nuances behind the scenes like credit uh, like address changes uh, things happening with uh, certain accounts that you don't even know about because you don't see nothing moving with the account but it is certain things that happen and how certain other things affect it that you have no ideas going on but there are other things that can happen where you know there were a collection you put a collection off you got a charge off taken off or you got a charge off change and you know you got a new credit card you had inquiries you know stuff like that you can kind of know bam that's how it affected it but there are other things where you just don't know and the score drops or goes up I have instances where my score dropped I don't know why at all I don't see anything and my score went up but I don't know why what happened you know it could have been a credit age or anything who knows what it was all right but before then if you would like to have access to all three scores from Equifax TransUnion and Experian along with your reports click the credit monitoring link in the description below and that way you can have um, an insight on what's going on with your credit report and what you need to do if something need be if your score is not where you want it to be or where you think it should be all right and that way once you get that under control you will then have access to funding from several financial institutions if you would like to make 500 to a thousand dollars plus per week utilizing your vehicle on your own time click the wealth dasher link in the description below now if you don't want to use your vehicle or you don't have a vehicle you can click the wealth hire car link in the description below and along with the wealth dasher link you can use the hire car to make five hundred to a thousand dollars plus per week if you have access to cash once you make the cash you like to know how I got five properties for five thousand five hundred dollars click the be free link in the description below and if you like to earn cash back on your online shopping, no matter what time of the year it is, even though it would be good for this time because you're going to do a lot of shopping, it's holiday season, click the cash back link in the description below. Alright, so now let's talk about this. Alright, so we're going to start with, you know, what happened earlier this year or why was it earlier this year. Alright, you saw what's going on with my FICO 9 if you watched the last video. You saw what's going on with my auto scores with FICO 8 and my bank card score, which is the bank card scores for credit cards. You saw that. And of course, the auto scores for auto loans. All right. But now I'm going to show you the general three bureau score. All right. But we're going to start from an earlier time period. All right. Okay. This was January. Uh, this was December. I'm sorry. This is December of 2020. Okay. You see, I had a 655 with Experian, a 679 with Equifax pretty good it's a good range right 679 with Equifax and you see I had a 646 with TransUnion alright so we had 655 with Experian 679 
with Equifax. They had a 646 with TransUnion. I was still building, I was still doing some things. I had just recently, I say within the last few months, I got another, uh, I got my first credit limit increase on my credit card, on my cash rewards credit card. I had, I was doing everything at 3% as far as my credit card is concerned. I think I had just got put on as an authorized user on an American Express card. So that looked like new credit. And maybe some other things went on back then, but that's things I can think of right now, okay? So, and then I had just recently turned everything around from earlier that year, just around uh, February, March. I would start, I just paid off some, some charge-offs. I paid, now when I say paid off some charge-offs, what happened was I was paying the cards off and I was trying to get them to not be a charge off, but I, you know, it didn't work out that way and it became a charge off. And that just what happened. And so now I paid it off. And one of the, one of them is not a charge off. Actually, one of them is just a closed account. And so I paid that off as a closed account. And so that was just a closed account. So that kind of like messed up my, uh, my history, you know, my credit length a little bit. The other one, they actually turned into a charge off. They wouldn't flip it back because uh, I did a settlement and they didn't flip it back like I wanted them to. And you know I was still going through some stuff over that. So it's, that's actually going on as a disputed item on my credit report. I'm not disputing it now, but there's a notation saying that um, card holder disputes this item or disputes the validity of this item or something like that. So if something says like that on my credit report. So it's just actually a notation on there saying that, you know, I don't agree with what they're saying, but that's on one credit card. The other one, it was just closed and um, it just looks like a closed credit card account. All right. That's all it looks like. And that's pretty much it with that. All right. So we can go to the next one. So this is January of 2021. All right. So around here, you know. This right here, my, I think I had a student loan. This right here was kind of high. And this was getting up there, right? So you see, I got a 674 at Experian, Equifax 684, and TransUnion 663. All right. And you see, my utilization here is at 2%. All right. See, I'm at 2%. And remember, I was telling you, I keep my utilization around 3 to 5%. Even right here, I went down as low as 2%. All right. So that pretty much was going on here. I had a student loan. I was at the end of that period where I was just at the end and I think I was done. I think I had maybe like one or two more payments to go and put it with the student loan. And so that's why I was at with this. All right. And I just got all the collections off. Um, I think they just changed the status of the old auto loan I had. They just changed that status. And so I think that's how this got up to where it was at. All right. So then next all right here is February. All right, you see here's a 3% utilization here. Remember I told you I keep things at 3%. All right, here's the highest I've been since a few years ago. A few years ago, I told you I got as high as 780. I think it was 785 or something like that. But since then, this is the highest I've got, which is 690 with Experian, all right? And 686 with Equifax, okay? Now right here, this is where the problem was. I had gotten and and, and uh, I, I had gotten a. It was a bank, all right. So it was a bank collection, a bank account collection, a checking account collection from a bank. I had got removed off of Experian. It was only on Experian, all right. But when it got removed from here, they added it over to TransUnion. It was added on the TransUnion, which is why I dropped so low right here. Okay, so that's what that problem is. Is I got a collection added over here, and so I had to get that taken care of. And I think I did a video about that, the letter I used and everything, and it had actually got removed. So it was removed here. It had just got added right here. So right here is showing. Okay, here's that collection. So that's why I dropped so much right here. All right. But I, oh, and I think um, I paid off the student loan on here as well. I think I said I was almost done with it. I paid it off here. That's why I jumped up. So I got extra points for that. So I think that's what happened here. Again, I can't really 
tell you exactly pinpoint, but I know around that time I had one more payment and I paid it off. So that's what happened here. But then paying off the student loan actually had an adverse effect as well. It, it jumped up, but then something else had happened. All right. So here's what happened. All right. Now, not only remember that that collection had hit my TransUnion. Okay. And I had to get it taken off. All right. But now you see how it dropped to 596. It was just a 617. I dropped to 596. And you see here, now this is March, by the way. And you see, I'm down to 1% utilization. See how I do my utilization? I keep all my utilizations low. So I typically hover around 5 to 7% now, but back then I was doing 3%. So I was hovering obviously around 1 to 3%. So that's why I said somewhere around 3 to 5, 3 to 7%, I keep my utilization. But right now I'm going to stick with 5%. All right. So what happened was when I paid off the student loan, it stopped reporting. And so when it start reporting, that goes against your algorithm. So now what's happening is your algorithm is switching, is reconfiguring. So when it's reconfiguring, it's adjusting for your new position. All right. Where you're at now. So now you can go higher than the highest. So I had a I had a highest I can go to when I had the student loan on there. You know, because they were still paying it. And over here. I got the collection, so now with them not being a report to student loan anymore, and I reconfigure it, dropped me even further down. Now I'm under 600 here. Okay, so me paying off the student loan, it dropped me here, and I dropped here. So now I'm at 651 with experience, and this is in March 651 in experience, 668 with Equifax, and TransUnion. I'm at 596. Now I dropped all the way down to fair. I went from good all the way back down to fair. This is the lowest of the fares, all right? So then we're gonna go to April. Now, I went back up to 600 here, all right? I haven't gotten the uh, collection off yet. So I'm working on getting this collection off over here on TransUnion. I stayed the same right here pretty much. And this didn't move as much as well, but you see I'm at 4% now. So I'm at the 4% utilization range, right? So I'm doing some things, I'm still doing my payments and all of that, I'm still doing all of that, all of that. And I'm making some moves right up in here, all right? Now y'all see up in here, this is right before I bought my Acadia Denali. This is right before I bought it, all right? This is May 9th, remember I told you I bought it in May. And y'all saw the video about the auto scores and all that stuff, all right? And I actually spoke about this in the auto score video. And remember you saw the truck with the update and all that stuff when I bought it and all that. So this is right before that. I think I bought the truck on like the 16th or the 17th. And this is right before that. The 16th or 17th of May. And this is right before that. So I was at a 669. As you see, I got the uh the the collection off. Alright, so now I jumped all the way up to 661. Okay. I jumped all the way to 661 with TransUnion. So this 660 with Equifax didn't remove. And now I'm at 669 with Experian, okay? Okay, here's June. All right, 662, 656. So I dropped a little bit here. 665. Remember, I had some inquiries and all of that. So this is what's going on with this. This is the inquiry hits. All right, what's going on with that? I'm pretty sure that's all that was. But this was just the inquiries. All right. So because even right here it says four recent changes, all this stuff. So you know, I'm pretty sure this was with the inquiries. All right. So that's what this is about. So we're gonna go to July. 669, 667, 669. This is July. See, I made 3% still. So that's 3%. 669, 67, 669. All right, this is me just making payments. All right. Uh, I made, I believe this is when they calculated my first auto payment. You know, when I pay, I did my double payments on there. Um, I had another inquiry over here, but this is around the time when I apply for the resort membership and I believe it just hit Experian so this didn't go up as way it should but you know but now the resort membership is reporting on Experian all right and it's probably some other things happening like I said I can't really recall I just know that I'm going back up as you see all right so now we're in August I did this in another video too so as you it's just stuff looking familiar because I did another other video now you see my, I'm at 668 right here. Okay. So around this time, I believe 
the resort is about to report. But he was about to report here. All right. And my note auto loans are reporting. See, I'm up to 10%. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Around here is remember I told you that the person that I'm an authorized user on the American Express card, they were a lot higher than normal. Okay. They were up, I think, around 15 to 20% on that credit card. So it jumped my utilization up to 10%, even though my credit cards are at 5%. But it jumped the utilization up to 10%. All right. So that's what happened here. That utilization situation and of course you see the uh, the auto loan was important and i also believe this is around the time the you see that this time or in september i believe it was this time where the um the resort membership started reporting so let's go into september now here's september see i'm up now Good on everything. 673 with Experian, 680 with Equifax, and 679 with TransUnion. So everything was reporting just fine. You see, I'm at 5% on everything. Everything reporting just fine, right? And now we're going to go to October, which is now. Okay, so here's my three bureau score for October 2021 679 with TransUnion, 680 with with Equifax and 678 with, uh, with October, I'm sorry, with Experian. So I'm at 678 with Experian, Equifax I'm at 680, and TransUnion I'm at 679. So I'm good with all here. So this is around where you want to be. You really want to hit that six, you want all of these to say 680, and I'm pretty sure to say 680 by next month for all of them. For all of these, I'm pretty sure it's going to say 680 by next month. All right. So that's pretty much what's going on with this. Um, next month, everything's gonna be reporting just fine as usual. You know, everything's gonna be paid. We're gonna stay at around five percent. You know, the resort membership is gonna report here, so this should go a lot higher anyway because we got the resort membership on here. Um, but everything should be well over six eighty in November, and I can't wait to show you that. But thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you did, or even if you didn't, you just like my content anyway, you know, just subscribe to the channel. If you like the music, subscribe to It's Oasis. You want to go ahead and get access to your scores and your reports from all three bureaus. As you can see, Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. Click the credit monitoring link in the description below. That way you can do exactly what I'm doing. You can go through my do-it-yourself credit repair list and do exactly what I'm doing to get your credit to where you can get access to funding from any financial institution. Okay? You like to make $500 to $1,000 plus per week utilizing your vehicle. You can click the Wealth Dasher link in the description below. If you don't have a vehicle or you don't want to use your own, you can click the Wealth Hire Car link in the description below. So you can hire your cars. So you can go ahead and utilize the Wealth Dasher opportunity to make $500 to $1,000 plus per week on your own time. All right. If you want to know how I got five properties for $5,500, whether you have money now, or you're going to get the money soon. You just want to know how to do it. Click the Be Free link in the description below. And since it's that time of year or any time of the year when you're online shopping, but this is the holiday season, you want to get cash back while you're shopping online, click the cash back link in the description below. And as always, until the next video, everybody, let's get this money.